For the past few months, I've been in a journaling slump. I've been a bullet journal devotee since 2017, and I still relish the setup process, making beautiful spreads with the best intentions, but then I leave my journal on my desk or in my drawer unattended for days at a time. No hope of filling out my trackers or crossing off to-do lists, and the whole point of a bullet journal is that you have to use it for it to be a helpful tool. For the first several years that I was bullet journaling, I loved using it. I looked forward to sitting down with my journal in the morning and planning out my day. I loved using my pretty pages and week by week, month by month, day by day, building this comprehensive compendium of me. So what changed? It's not that the spreads I'm setting up don't work for me, or that I don't like how they look, or that I've strayed too far from the original bullet journal method, it's not even that I don't have time. What changed is that I stopped romanticizing my journal. I've always believed that notebooks and journals are a little bit magic, and I still do. A brand new blank notebook is untapped potential, but even better than that, a full notebook has a soul all of its own, full of rememberings and reminders and life. Lately I've stopped seeing my journal as a little piece of myself, a tool to help me in times of chaos and a lifeline to keep me organized. I got bored, I got complacent, the act of using my journal doesn't excite me anymore but I'm not ready to give up on it yet. I want to feel excited to journal, I want to feel organized. I want to start romanticizing my bullet journal again. This idea of romanticizing your life became popular during the darkest days of the pandemic. It's essentially a mindfulness exercise that's supposed to help you feel more present and more fulfilled and help you learn to find little moments of joy in your everyday life. It's teaching yourself to find beauty in things that might otherwise seem small or mundane or insignificant. This concept of romanticizing your life is something I've been thinking about a lot lately, but I thought it would be particularly interesting to see if I could take Take some of those principles and apply them to the practice of using my journal to see if that could help me fall back in love with it. So where did I start? Well, I turned to social media, which is always a fraught but visually beautiful thing to do, specifically to Instagram, and here's what I found. I found some of us make beautiful journaling nooks in our homes or our bedrooms. Some of us make a journaling and tea, journaling and coffee, journaling and wine ritual with a lit candle and a cozy blanket, while some of us take our journals out with us to beautiful places, to parks and gardens and cafes and libraries, and capture a little of the spirit of the world in the dust and the ink that marks those pages. I decided I'd try it all. I started with an office space overhaul. I work from home, so this is where I journal, it's where I film and edit my videos, it's where I edit photos for my clients, and it's where I send emails. I spend a lot of time here, so it gets messy really quickly. I'm honestly sick and tired of cleaning and tidying and reorganizing this space, which means there's too much in it. I decluttered. I was ruthless. I eliminated a big box of stationery, gorgeous washi tapes and stickers and paper that I'd used some of and felt finished with, or simply never felt an affinity with in the first place, and I listed it on Facebook Marketplace for $5. It was collected by the mother of a teenage girl whose love of stationery and journaling is just beginning to blossom. I felt that little thrill of magic start to spark. Then I made a second box of stationery. These are items I'd never even touched or I'd barely used, and that box is for one of you. We'll talk about giveaway details later on in the video. I wanted to keep only what would fit in my desk drawers. They're still pretty packed, but I'm so happy not to have overflow boxes of more washi stashed in other cupboards. All the stationery I've kept is stationery I truly want to use. A beautiful but sometimes overwhelming part of making content that is based around journaling is that I'm quite often sent more stationery than I can reasonably use, and I don't always get to choose. I know some people love bursting shelves and drawers and having so much variety, but I am not a collector. I prefer to keep only the things that I can really see myself using. Actually, something I'm including in my journal going forward is a regular decluttering schedule. I have it here on my monthly reset page. Hopefully, if I'm decluttering regularly, that will keep things manageable and I won't get so overwhelmed. Not just overwhelmed by choice when I sit down to journal, but also keep me from feeling overwhelmed in a cluttered space. Next up, a change of location. 
Instagram is full of aesthetic journaling and study content created in cafes, and it looks so cozy and inviting. I woke up to the sound of pouring rain on a Friday morning, and it was so welcome. I've been desperate to feel cozy and cool at the tail end of what's been a particularly humid and oppressive Brisbane summer. I packed a bag with my bullet journal and my research journal and a capsule collection of stationery, and I took my partner on a planning date over breakfast. I'm an introvert, and I work from home for myself as a sole trader. It's a lifestyle that works for me. I love being alone, but there was something inspiring about being around other people's lives, hearing snippets of conversations around me and having no control over the playlist that works something up in my spirit. I've been thinking a lot lately about the concept of the third place. It's a space for people to gather outside of our homes, which are the first place, and our workplaces, which are the second place. As someone who works from home, I don't even really have that second place, and I've noticed I can become a total recluse without even realizing it's happening. As introverted as I am, I also crave that sense of community and connection, so taking my journals out to a cafe or library and just getting out of my space can do me a lot of good. There's also something about being creative within certain limits that really works for me. Only taking a selection of washi and stickers with me means I have to make those work with whatever spreads I want to create, and I can only take as much as I can carry. Since taking my journals out to beautiful spaces is something I want to do more often, I also wanted to elevate the experience even further with a beautiful bag to carry my journals and supplies with me. Which brings me to today's sponsor, Teddy Blake, creators of luxury leather handbags without the exorbitant price tag. I've never really been a luxury handbag kind of girl for a few reasons. Most importantly, probably the prohibitive pricing, but also I'm kind of picky. I didn't want to spend $2,000, but I also didn't want a utilitarian looking canvas thing. And I would tried some pretty bags in the past that were cheap, but they ended up just falling apart after a couple of months of use. If I'm going to invest in a quality leather handbag, I want it to be a classic and timeless design that I know isn't going to be off trend in a year or two, but I also really like unusual colors. I love a pop of color. I was honestly just starting to think my expectations were unreasonable and the bag I wanted didn't exist. And then I found her. Introducing my Teddy Blake Kim Stampato 14 inch bag in light pink. The folks at Teddy Blake actually very kindly gifted me this bag and I'm so grateful because she is truly everything I wanted. She's elegant, but she's fun. She's my signature color. She's made from this gorgeous Italian leather that Honestly, when you first open the box, the smell kind of hits you and that's an experience in itself. But best of all, she can fit a B5 notebook without breaking a sweat or an iPad or an e-reader or a nice big hardcover book. My favorite configuration so far is a notebook or two, a small pencil case, my wallet and my phone. And I tuck my keys and my lipstick into the little inside pocket for easy access. It's a little on the heavy side with two journals, so I prefer the shoulder strap, but it does also look gorgeous over the crook of your arm or carried by the handles. Teddy Blake's bags are made in the same Italian factories as other luxury brands by experienced luxury leather craftsmen with a focus on high quality construction and durability, which is so reassuring. Journals can get heavy, but I'm not worried about wearing this bag out. I've already been using it pretty heavily for about a month and I can't see a single sign of wear. All Teddy Blake's bags are available in a range of sizes, some even bigger than this one, and plenty of smaller sizes too, and in a range of colors and leather styles, some bold, some classic. I definitely recommend you visit their website and have a scroll. There's really something for everyone. Here's the best part. Teddy Blake are democratizing luxury by selling their designer bags direct to consumer online and spending less across marketing and branding, which means they're able to make their prices far more accessible. My Kim Stempato 14 inch bag would cost $1,400 $70 US at a traditional retail price, but from Teddy Blake, it's just 535 US. So that's $935 less than other luxury brands. If you want to twin with me and be journal bag buddies or see what else Teddy Blake has on offer for your journal travels or for day to day, follow the links in the description. I've got a link there to my specific bag and also to the website generally in case you'd like to explore more. Thank you so much to Teddy Blake for sponsoring this video and helping me romanticize my journal even when I'm on the go. So let's take this bag and my journal out on the town. For this little cafe journaling session, I brought my bullet journal, my research and development journal, a few pens, a few washies, and a sticker book. I spent two hours planning for my upcoming reading journal workshops in Brisbane in March and setting up some example layouts that I can pass around to my attendees to give them ideas. I'll pop a link to some more info about those workshops in the description in case you're local to Brisbane and keen to learn more about reading journaling with me. Here's what I found out about journaling in a cafe. 
I didn't want to use my washi or stickers. It was too much mess and fuss and I felt really conspicuous. I'll be keeping this to just pens in the future, which means cafe journaling for me is great for things like content planning, regular long form thoughts and feelings journaling or brainstorming. I think I'd feel more comfortable taking the extra pretty stuff with me to a library, so that might still happen. I'm also toying with the idea of getting a reusable sticker book so I can pre-select a bunch of stickers and maybe even pre-cut some PET tape sections and have that ready to go when I want to leave the house for some off-site journaling time. From a productivity standpoint, getting out of my office was a game changer. Sometimes when I'm sitting here at my desk, I can feel the weight of my whole to-do list on my shoulders all around me. Being away from that really helped me focus in on a singular task and only taking the things I needed to complete that one task also made it a great way to get things done, a nice change of scenery, an excellent co-working opportunity, and generally a great way to spend a Friday morning. <laughs> I will absolutely be making this a regular part of my week. I often have the house to myself in the evenings and I always think, oh, that'll be a great time to journal. And then I end up on the couch watching TV with my cat because I don't wanna come back into this workspace, what feels like my workspace, during what's supposed to be my leisure time. I wanted to find a way to make it feel different. And as a photographer, I went straight to the best way I know to change a mood, lighting. It was still raining outside, which definitely helped. I cleared everything off my desk, I turned on my desk lamp, and I lit an array of candles, tea lights, tapers, and a gorgeous mint and vanilla scented candle. I put on a playlist called Mood Magical, and I let myself absorb into the vibe. I never imagined I'd be setting up reading journal spreads to Brian Eno on a Saturday evening, but it was glorious. I got completely into a flow state and I smashed out four reading journal spreads. I'd made myself a cup of tea as well, but I was so absorbed in my journaling that I mostly forgot to drink it and it went cold. I felt witchy and serene and so relaxed. I couldn't recommend this enough. Candles and Brian Eno might not be your perfect romantic journaling combo. For you, it might be your journal plus fresh flowers and morning sunshine, or your journal plus colored LED lights and trance music, or your journal plus a glass of wine on your balcony and the sounds of your city or the countryside around you. Whatever it is that makes sitting down to journal feel special to you, I urge you to do it. After a few months of neglecting my journal, I still feel that journals and notebooks are magic and a full journal is the most magical. But to fill a journal, you have to use it. And I want to want to use my journal often and enthusiastically. It's been seven years since I first picked up my first bullet journal. So of course, the way I feel about it and my relationship with it will have changed in that time. I'm really proud of my progress and I'm still working out the best way to fit my journal into my current lifestyle but I am feeling more excited to journal again. Now, I have this box of goodies to give away to one of you, and I'm hoping the person it goes to, maybe it will help reignite a journaling spark for you too. I wanna be really clear that while some of the items in this box have never been touched, some of them have been gently used, but all of them are still in really good condition. If you'd like to enter the giveaway and potentially win this box of goodies, leave me a comment down below and let me know how you like to romanticize your journal. And yes, I am hoping that I can steal some of your ideas for my own journaling romanticizing practice too. This giveaway is open internationally and I'll be announcing the winner on my community tab in a post one week from today. So that will be Friday the 1st of March, Australian Eastern Standard Time, which might be Thursday for those of you in other places. I'm curious to know, have you ever been in a journaling slump? If so, did you get out of it? How did you get out of it? Did you change to a different planning method or style or a different kind of journal? Let me know what has worked for you because I'm really curious and there are no right or wrong answers here. It's just, we're all different and we find the things that work for us. If you'd like to keep watching over here is my most recent bullet journal setup video for March, 2024. It's based around tea. I think it's really cute and hopefully I'll actually use the heck out of it now. And underneath that is another video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.